Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Simon from Amazon Web Services here, joined by Chris from Lyft. Welcome, Chris. It's great to be here. We are going to be talking about some pretty cool stuff. We're talking microservices, we're talking discovery. But first, let's talk about microservices and scale. You guys use microservices at Lyft. Yeah. How many? One, two, three? Yeah, we, uh, we started out with one, uh, but today we're at about 150 across the company. Nice. And I'm guessing that you know, with all those microservices, you're moving really slowly, not much change, that sort of stuff? Yeah, quite the opposite. <laughs> uh, we've got about 30 different teams that are responsible for that set of 100 plus services, um, and we probably deploy uh, a few hundred times a day. Wow, a few hundred times a day. I know organizations that wish they could do that a year. Yeah. Um, so it all sounds wonderful. That's why we go with microservices to allow flexibility and agility. As we know, there's no architectural free lunch though. Yep. And one of the big challenges is uh, service discovery. You guys have a really interesting take architecturally. How you solve that? Take sure. Through. Yeah, well, so at peak, uh, our production infrastructure serves uh, over a million requests per second. Wow. So one of the things that's been really important is making sure we have uh, the highest availability and reliability for uh, both for, uh, inner service communication as well as uh, end user kind of response latency. So one of the things that we did is uh, from the very beginning, um, the first server that uh, our users will hit when they open up their phone uh, to request a ride is this piece of infrastructure we built, which is a front proxy as well as an inner service communication bus for all our different microservices. And what this service does, is it maintains a local um, cache of every other service at Lyft and all the instances associated with it. And that allows us to route that request to uh, the lowest latency, healthiest service um, at any given time. So this is a proxy running on the EC2 instance that the service itself is running on or, or a cluster of those in order scaling groups. Exactly, yep. And that, that service basically out of band asynchronously will talk to a, a piece of infrastructure we built called the discovery service, which is its own cluster. Um, and that discovery service uh, maintains a list of all services um, at Lyft that it stores in DynamoDB and when new instances come online, they'll register themselves with the discovery service. That'll get stored in Dynamo. And then any service that asks for the latest state of the world can get that, um, again, out of band asynchronously from discovery service. So how often would that proxy be hitting the discovery service to refresh itself? Uh, it depends, but on average it's about once a minute. Fantastic. But the relationship for what you're saying is asynchronous with the discovery service, so how does the proxy work in relation to other services? Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the proxy basically will sit alongside uh, every given service and then uh, when that request comes in, it'll look uh, for, you know, the basically if we have this request going from service one to service two, mm -hmm. it's actually going to go out through the proxy that sits alongside service one, in through the proxy that sits alongside service two, based on the routing uh, table that it, it gets from discovery service. So each service is kind of independently aware of the other services around it. Exactly. Health checking, that sort of stuff? Yeah, so each proxy uh, does its own active uh, health checking. So what that means is in order for service one to talk to this instance of service two, it must have learned about it from discovery service at some point. Uh, and it must have also passed active health checking from this instance of S1 to this instance of S2. And uh, I say learned about it at some point because we've designed this infrastructure uh, to be so resilient that both the data, data store uh, associated with Discover Service DynamoDB could entirely disappear. Which we Not that that's ever going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> or the Discovery Server itself could totally go offline. And what happens is uh, every instance will maintain the last known state of uh, the infrastructure and use both that set of instances as well as the instances that it um, knows are healthy from active health checking to route those requests. So if this disappears for a second, it's fine. It disappears for 10 minutes, it's fine. Even a few hours, we'll continue to, to serve traffic still, reliably. Still yep. So let's dive a little bit more deeply into the discovery service. How's it built, how's it operate? Yeah, uh, so discovery service is built in Python um, and it's uh, you know one of our, our uh, higher volume services at Lyft, not the highest, but it's something that, that we definitely uh, have in an auto scale group, so it can ramp up as the, the individual number of uh, service instances also scales. And DynamoDB, why the choice of that as the data store? Yeah, DynamoDB is great because uh, it, it gets out of the way um, in terms of being a, a highly available, reliable production data store. There are only two ways uh, that you can scale it, uh, read IOPS or write IOPS, and uh, not having to to worry about chunk migrations or dealing with, uh, you know, the on-call rotation for that data store is just makes makes this whole service um, something we don't have to spend much time thinking about. Which is interesting because it is so critical. And it's kind of like the 
the magic that strings all these things together. Yeah, I think uh, you know the traditional approach to service discovery is uh, a strongly consistent system, and we've taken a, an eventually consistent approach to service discovery, which has just uh, eliminated so many headaches from from our microservice architecture. That's brilliant. So you've used auto scaling for resiliency. You've got local discovery of services. You build a robust data service discovery service. I should say that's not yep. going to go anywhere unless something really, really bad happens. You've got a durable store of state. Yep. And, and the one other great thing that this, this piece of infrastructure provides, given it's located on both the client and server end of each call, is an incredible insight into the uh, performance, success rate, latency of every single RPC that we Fantastic. make at Lyft. So getting lots of metadata that you can action. Definitely. Fantastic. Chris, thank you so much for sharing your architecture with us. It's really cool. Thank you for, thanks for having me. And thanks for joining us on This Is My Architecture.